Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'd. Okey ah. Uh, Assalamualaikum semua. Selamat hari raya, maafi batin. Alright. So alhamdulillah kita berkesempatan berjumpa lagi. After uh, the long uh, week, uh, two weeks, two weeks, ne? two weeks of uh, holidays. Okay, so I hope everyone dalam keadaan yang sehat, right? Sentiasa berada di rumah lagi, tak keluar lagi. Walaupun uh, yesterday our prime minister already announced that uh, tomorrow is going to be uh, uh, RCMO, eh? Recovery uh, Restriction Movement Order. Ataupun PKPP So PK, PK, PKPB Akan diganti dengan PKPP eh, Pemulihan Even though dah boleh merentas negeri uh, But still uh, Bear in mind You need to follow all the SOP that been state by uh, Our KKM mm, Hopefully uh, COVID-19 ni Will uh, soon insyaAllah uh, Will be recovered as soon as possible okay uh, so how's the raya everyone I raya for myself saya raya uh, bersendirian and not not bersendirian with my family lah okay so none of a visitor allowed to come uh, you know to have a visit or whatsoever lah so just to make sure that everyone stay healthy Okay, uh, so today, uh, let's, uh, let's continue our lessons uh, on chapter 6. We're still in chapter 6, which is uh, under polymerase chain reaction PCR. And for the part 1, I stop until... Yeah, until this one, because you move on. Yeah. Okay, so today I'm going to continue uh, with uh, slide number 30, 33, which is a uh, multiplex PCR. Okay, so uh, what is multiplex PCR? Uh, multi -ex, uh, multiplex uh, PCR is actually a simultaneous uh, detection of a multiple target right, in a single reaction well with a different pair of primer for each target. It means that uh, you have like uh, a few samples that can you can you can run together using design a designated primer and from that uh, you, you are allowed to detect whether there is a presence of your target sequence or non-target sequence disappear. So I mean from the video that uh, assignment in the video that you made I believe that everyone already expert using PCR right? Banyak orang buat, uh, uh, buat, uh, buat tajuk PCR Mostly like maybe like 20 30% Almost half of you did a good job uh, in the video assignments You cerita tentang PCR right? QT, uh, QPCR, RT-PCR, QRT-PCR And uh, ada juga orang buat uh, you know uh, tajuk tentang, tentang DNA fingerprints that use PCR as well okay so in this multiplex PCR for example uh, you have a two hamburger right you have a two hamburger and you want to detect is there any presence of a pathogen in both burger uh, usually untuk food poisoning lah sometimes untuk food poisoning for example if you heard a case a new case in Kuala Tengganu eh makan apa tu uh, uh, agak 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 buih I don't know and ada seorang yang meninggal disebabkan tu and berpuluh orang yang kena food poisoning okay so dia berpunca daripada apa telur telur yang busuk right? uh, peniaga tu pakai telur yang busuk so dalam telur ni of course lah ada usually salmonella lah, telur ayam right so Kesian lah dekat uh, pembeli. Okay? So, if you want to sell anything, you have to make sure that all the ingredients that you use 
is in a good condition lah tak expired ni kan selagi boleh selagi nak cut cost expired pun you pakai ya semua kan so it's not good really it's not good okay so in this example you have like hamburger 1 hamburger 2 and uh, hamburger 1 okay you that uh, this is a theory lah for example hamburger 1 ni ada pathogen uh, and uh, hamburger hamburger 2 tak ada pathogens and then you have to control which is the first one is uh, this uh, bacteria strain that code for non pathogen which is tak ada, tak ada uh, bukan pathogen ni bacteria and the other plate is a pathogen bacteria okay so in this uh, kinds of uh, PCR you will use four primer simultaneously okay so the first primer is uh, for non pathogens ada uh, uh, okay ada for example kalau uh, primer 1 and primer 2 and another pathogen, primer 1 and primer 2. So if uh, the sample uh, uh, consists of non pathogen bacteria, so maybe the, uh, after you run agarose gel and you run uh, uh, northern blots, you either uh, abandon uh, 300 base pair or 150. Right. Otherwise, kalau your sample to other pathogen, 400 best pair will be produced, and 225 best best pair also will be produced. Okay. So after the reaction, you can run uh, in the gel. Lah. So gel one, gel two, gel three, and gel four. So in uh, in well number one, no gel wet well lah. Well in well number one. So this is the non pathogen lah, control one, and well number four is the pathogen one, 400 and 225. This is 300 and 150 lah. Okay, so you you run you punya sample 1 and sample 2. So in sample 1 and sample 2, uh, mainly in sample 1 tadi, hamburger number 1, there is a presence of a uh, pathogen target sequence. Alright, so it appear that they will be appear in the same size as in control. So this one, satu, and this one, satu. Whereas yang sample number 2, it uh, consists of none. Pathogenic, pathogenic bacteria uh, in this case uh, band yang kat sini dan band yang kat sini so actually in sample uh, hamburger number 1 it present both, both, pato, both bacteria lah pathogen and non pathogen so this is uh, a multiplex PCR example of multiplex uh, PCR ok then uh, also multiplex PCR ni can be used for DNA, uh, DNA fingerprinting lah Macam uh, kawan you uh, terangkan kat dalam universal assignment video, so you can refer to that. They did a really uh, super tremendous job, explain uh, a PCR in crime scene very well. So semua orang nak jadi uh, Sherlock Holmes. So this is example lah, uh, multiple, uh, multiple PCR that, that they use in the crime scene in investigations. Okay. So now let's go to DNA fingerprinting using DNTR. Okay. DNA fingerprinting, semua orang dah tahu. Okay. Uh, in fact, kalau you tengok, there is a 134 uh, video that I have to uh, evaluate. Alright. So Alhamdulillah, saya dah settlekan almost 95%. So ada lagi 5% baki untuk D1 groups. I will... Uh, uh, evaluate it uh, later on malam ni ke, besok ke, I'm not sure and uh, as I said <coughs> more than 50% uh, give a story about PCR and then fingerprinting and I believe, I rasa tak ada seorang pun explain about uh, VNTRs but mainly you guys only explaining about any fingerprinting lah in uh, general lah. Gen in general, so secara amnya Okay, so what is uh, VNTR? So VNTR is actually a variable number tandem repeats. So V is variables, N is number, T is tandem, R is repeats. So uh, VNTR is uh, it's located in a genome where a short se nucleotide sequence is organized in a tandem repeat. Means that in one day, uh, DNA in one genome. So, you, so imagine you have a very long DNA or long genome, lah. Okay, long DNA. So in the long DNA, uh, 
uh, if you remember, I say that there is a gene, active genes mm-hmm. located along the DNA. So, for example, for example, this is your DNA, lah. Okay, and the and this is uh, gene yang pertama, gene kedua, gene tiga, so on and so forth. So in between gene one and gene two is uh, how to say is non gene coding means that you can say that is junk DNA. So basically, there is uh, the junk DNA play a vital role in our DNA identification actually. So the NTRs ni found in many chromosomes and often show variations in length lah. So when we talk about tandem repeat, means that dia uh, repeat to bersusun, okay? For example, ACTG. Then the next is ACTG, 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 ACTG. Okay, so that's example of tandem repeat lah. Okay. Uh, each var- variance of the uh, tandem repeat acts uh, act as inherited uh, allele, allowing them to be used for a personal identifications. Okay, so macam kita punya fingers lah. So semua orang ada finger, uh, semua orang ada uh, thumb, ada ada uh, uh, ibu jari. And then uh, dalam ibu jari orang ni. Uh, Even though all of you have a thumb, but then the pattern of the thumb is different. Okay, sama juga macam DNA ni. So even though semua orang ada DNA, but then dalam DNA tu dia ada khas untuk you for your identifications. Okay, so kalau kita cakap pasal gene, gene cannot be uh, your identification, cannot be used for identification because everyone has a gene. Okay, so for example, I have a gene that could for uh, uh, growth factor okay you pun ada gene yang sama yang code for growth factor so we cannot compare uh, the genes in the same species lah even though for a different species pun the gene is there but you know the length of the gene is different okay but then when we compare uh, the uh, variable VNTRs right semua orang is different, okay? So, VNTRs ni act as your identification lah or in DNA. And uh, usually, uh, VNTRs ni used for DNA fingerprinting. And bear in mind, VNTRs ni cannot be cut by uh, restriction enzyme, okay? So, re- restriction enzyme will cut uh, the, the region that flank Uh, the VNTR. So, for example, tengah ni VNTRs and actually RE akan attack at the sides of VNTR, flank uh, A and flank B. So, it can potong kat situ. Then, you will run for agarose the VNTR lah. So, VNTR ni, as I said, uh, is based on tandem repeat. So, the longer the tandem repeat, the longer it size. The shorter the tandem repeat, the shorter its size. Okay? So, VNTR ni actually is a type of a mini satellite. There is a two types of satellite, which is mini satellites and macro satellites. So, uh, uh, mini satellites ni, for example, is VNTRs lah. So, uh, bahasa mudah nak cakap, dia panjang. Dia lagi, lagi besar, repeat, tender repeat dia. But then, on uh, micro satellites, for example, is uh, STR, simple tandem repeats, is more shorter. Okay, so for example, the NTR ni, uh, repeat dia is actually around 10 to 1,000 base pair. Right, so repeat lah. For example, 10 ATC, GC, GTA, CG. Right, so 10 base pair. So the next is 10 base pair, 10 base pair, 10 base pair. So it can be repeated many, many times. But then, untuk uh, micro satellites, for example, simple tandem repeat ni, dia sikit je. Uh, less than 10 lah, usually. So, for example, 5 lah. T, C, A, G, G. The next is T, A, C, G, T, A, C, G. So, 5 saja. And then, near tandem repeat pun tak terlampau banyak. Okay. So, uh, basically, uh, as I mentioned, it can be used uh, for DNA fingerprinting lah. Okay. 
and uh, yeah. right. So this is the example, all right, of the DNA fingerprinting. So if you can see, gambar tak clear. Sorry, I'm I'm not sure where uh, the previous lecture got this image. I cannot found it. So I I try to explain it uh, on, uh, in my own words. Okay, uh, individual one, individual B, A, A, B, C, D. Okay, you can see here in the middle ni adalah VNTR lah. So VNTR number one, this is homologous, uh, uh, homologous uh, 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 chromosome. VNTR two, VNTR three, right? Some are one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If you can see here, the length is totally different lah. Okay, so for example here, uh, length A and B is the same. By then, uh, C dengan F is totally different. Okay, ni sama, ni sama. So it's something like that. Okay. So VNTR thing is variable number of tandem repeat, aka mini satellites. Okay, natural polymorphisms in human genome. Okay, it's polymorphism. Polymorphism. Different number of a short repeated sequence is repeat to fifty to hundred base pair long. Repeated in tandem array up to 40 kilo base pair long, right? So, panjang lah. The NTR is compared to uh, STR, uh, micro satellite. Okay. SSTR is simple sequence tandem repeat, uh, uh, known as micro satellite. Repeat of 2 to 4 nucleotide base pair lah. Okay. Uh, mainly, is more shorter than uh, the NTR. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is the same example. This from daddy, this from mommy, uh, parental uh, chromosome, and um, to, to daddy a little bit longer than from mommy. Lah. So if any other example, now like the last thing you will think of. So VNTR is a hyper variable, can be very different between individuals. Okay, so it's almost impossible for you to get the same uh, VNTR unless you are twins, right? And you are in the same uh, phylogenetic tree, okay? So, itu pun takkan sama 100% lah. Okay, kalau you identical twins, uh, maybe inshallah it's 100% 100, 100 uh, sama. So, by then, if you are in phylogenetic tree, or your position is far away from the ancestor, you still have uh, the same positions. But it's thought, uh, it's uh, almost uh, in uh, example in different lengths. Okay, so first, but we have mix up your know, uh, daddy VNTRs and your mommy VNTR during uh, chromosome uh, 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 amniosis process. Ne? Okay, so many different type of VNTRs can be found at many loss sites in the genome, of course. All right. So, other than the genes, dalam chromosome tu ada banyak 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 genes, positions of the genes. So VNTR tu pun in between of the of the genes. Okay, two individuals may have a similar VNTR at one low side, but the chances of two individuals having the same pattern of VNTR at some side are very small. Alright. So as I mentioned before lah, pattern yeah, you can share the same patterns. But um, not not the same uh, VNTR you can have, right? You can share, but then the same pattern exactly along the same sides is totally different, lah. Okay, it's it's almost impossible. Okay, so macam ni ni So this is a homologous chromosome. So individual A, B, C, uh, and this is forensic sample. Okay, forensic sample. So, kalau you compare kan forensic sample, kalau yang dia dua bini lah yang 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 bersalah jadi uh, pembunuh pembunuh bersiri. Okay. Right. So, the DNA sequence next to the NTR are usually highly conserved, very similar in every individual. So, mostly gene lah. Okay. Jadi, saya cakap tadi gene tu is highly conserved. Uh, among the DNA, among the uh, DNA sequence, so we can design PCR primer to target this uh, flanking sequence. Okay, 
So, not to mention that um, ada few students juga buat tentang Human Genome Project, right? So, uh, Human Genome Project took like several of years, right? Consumed like 3 billion uh, USD to complete all the uh, research to map all the sequence of, uh, of the uh, human DNA and thanks to the uh, projects actually kita dah tahu lah, uh, the sequence of the gene okay so chromosome 1 chromosome 3 chromosome 2 anti chromosome uh, uh, opening uh, what we call that Right, uh, the, the positions in the so chromosome 1, chromosome 2, so on and so forth. So, ada banyak positions of the NTR. So, the NTR is flanked by a conserved region. So, conserved region ni tadi, kita dah uh, ada bantuan dengan daripada Human Genome Project. So, kita dah tahu dah. Right, sebabnya dia conserved, highly conserved. So, kita dah tahu dah uh, dia punya uh, nitrotype sequence. So, using, masa kita buat PCR, we want when we want to design a primer, so we design primer based on the conserved regions. Okay, kita tak boleh de design primer based based on VNTR sebab so, each individual individual have a different VNTR sequence. But then conserved region ni semua orang sama uh, a DNA sequence there. So we can design a primer that can uh, read the VNTR sequence by using the PCR. Okay, using this primer, we can amplify the VNTR regions. The VNTR amplification produced will have different size and can be separated on agarose or polyacrylamide uh, gel. Okay, so for example, this is a homologous chromosome, all right, and a homologous chromosome. So you design the primer. Uh, this is the NTR lah. So you design a primer based on the conserved region lah. Okay. So you design primer based on conserved region. Knee forward, reverse, forward and reverse. Okay. So we your PCR are semua. Then you run agar gel. Then you can differentiate between paternal and maternal. So this is homologous. You remember homologous chromosome is consists of your uh, mom and dad punya chromosome lah, joined together and from that you can differentiate lah. The, the, the longer one is uh, uh, paternal the dad's ones and uh, the shorter one is maternal your mom wants, ones lah. okay right uh, by using PR to amplify all three regions a unique fingerprinting can be generated for each individual Mateo, Mateo. Right, sorry the, for the interruptions. Okay, work from home. Work, work from home again. Okay, so yang gambar aja ni sama ni yang cakap baca ni soal sama tu skip it. Okay, so this is example of uh, DNA fingerprinting on northern block. I guess it, this is on northern block, not on agarose. So the part agarose is not transferred to northern block. New uh, cellulose membrane, too, and then they check for detection using. Uh, okay, so this is marker, and this is uh, victims. This is evidence one, maybe come from blood. This is evidence number two, maybe come from hair. So if you can see here, evidence one and evidence two give a same position of the band. The VNTR is in the same position. So it means that uh, evidence one and evidence two come from the same suspect. Okay, And why the about victim? It's about in rule out. Lah. Right, you not rule out the evidence ni is not from the victim itself. So if you can see here, victim ni uh, carry a different VNTR. Okay, so this is a marker, suspect number one, suspect number two, and this is a control. Okay, this is marker as well. So between suspect number one, suspect number two, suspect number one have 
a same pattern as in evident one and evident two. So means that the VNT origins is the same, right? So voila, suspect number one is the murder. Right. So from murder, okay, fingerprinting by PCR of VNT. So this is the example lah. Sama macam tadi juga. Okay, family tree by DNA fingerprinting and tak nampak. This one is more, more clearer lah. Okay, the, the, the DNA fingerprinting. Okay, so just imagine this is the position of the uh, VNTR lah. Okay, just bear in mind lah. So, ni, this is your uh, father's side, this is your mother's side. So, atok and nenek belah ayah you ada 1 and over 8 and 3 over uh, and 5. So, bila dia uh, kahwin, dapat ayah you and it take half from your uh, atok and half from your nenek. Same goes to your mother lah. Okay. So, mother take half from your atok and take half from your uh, mother, uh, nenek. Okay. So, bila ayah you kahwin dengan mak you, right, the positions is going to mix up. Okay. So, for example, anak sulung, uh, from your mother half and from your mother father half 2.5 you can sum 2.5 1.2 5.7 1.2 1.3 7 so if you run uh, the uh, DNA fingerprinting it will do like this uh. okay will do like this the position so for example this is 1 8 all right this is 1 8 this is 1 5 this is 1, 5. This is 3, 5. This is 3, 5. Okay. So this is 2, 5, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 7, 1, 2, 1, 7, 5, 7, so on and so forth. So it's something like this lah. In a fingerprint thing. So from here, you boleh really check lah. Uh, either you uh, you you come from where, right? Siapa ayah you, siapa mak you, siapa parent you, siapa bi your biological uh, parents. Okay. Okay, so what what do mRNA level tell us? So we uh, jump into an, another section, another uh, topic which is on mRNA. So as I mentioned, from DNA, we uh, transcribe to mRNA and we translate to the protein. Okay, so mRNA will tell us about the reflex level of gene expression. Okay, of course. So from DNA, if you want protein want to be translated. Alright, the gene need to be expressed first from DNA to mRNA. And information about cell response, of course. So what you mean by information about cell response? For example, a protein that only been uh, expressed or been uh, made up during uh, a certain condition, right? A bacteria uh, do express a, a, a protein. For example, in harsh condition, maybe a cold temperature, baru protein to the express. Okay, so bila ada harsh environment, baru ada mRNA needs to be uh, translated from DNA, uh, translate, transcription from DNA, and translate into the uh, protein. And protein uh, production, but not always lah. Sometimes mRNA ni actually is not used for protein lah. Otherwise, dia ada buat benda lain lah. Uh, so tak semestinya the levels of mRNA, uh, its uh, effect, um, effects on the protein uh, production, it's not always, lah, but sometimes yes. Okay, so how to quantify mRNA in uh, DNA analysis? Okay, so to quantify both mRNA and DNA analysis, first for, uh, for direct quanti quanti quantitative of process, you may use nodal blotting or you can use in situ hybridization. So, so nodal blotting, you boleh tengok the punya uh, ni lah, uh, DNA position to adik tak ada. And in situ hybrid, hybridization based on uh, the fluorescent that uh, uh, triggered from the DNA sample. If, 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 if it's hybridized and also can be quantified using PCR applications. Okay. So we can use uh, either in a regular uh, RT-PCR, all right? RT-PCR is a, a 
a reverse trans reverse trans case PCR and a real time PCR or we call it Q PCR or microarrays. Okay. All right. So this is uh, basically basically the difference between uh, the PCR that I have nowadays. So first you have a normal PCR. And second, you have RT PCR, reverse transcript test PCR, and lastly, you have QPCR, uh, real time PCR, or you can have QRT PCR. They are very uh, famous nowadays. Okay, so first, I need to tell you you should remember that RT cannot it it, it, uh, it uh, did not mean real time. Right, RT is not real time, it's reverse transcript test. So even though real time for RT juga, tapi we cannot use RT as real time. So instead of RT, they use Q. Right, Q, PCR. So maybe Q is, is stand for uh, uh, quantitative, quantitative uh, 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 PCR. Okay. So PCR, normal PCR is exponential amplified target in a sequence and then your polymerase. So PCR is function due to amplify. Lah. Okay. And reverse transcript test mainly used to uh, for reverse transcription process, right? From mRNA to a complement, a C a DNA, so C DNA. Lah. And QPCR is actually for uh, quantitatively real time PCR for uh, quantitative measurement of application of DNA. So sama juga macam PCR, uh, QPCR ni actually uh, Q, uh, QPCR ni is a modified version of PCR. Uh, in PCR, you only can amplify the DNA, but in QPCR, you can amplify at the same time you can observe. Uh, the amplified DNA, so how uh, how is going on in the in the tubes, right? So daripada dua, daripada satu jadi dua, daripada dua jadi empat, daripada empat jadi lapan, so on and so forth. So you can uh, watch it live, okay? So bawa punya DNA that amplified. And it's actually, uh, QPCR is actually a combination of PCR and uh, spectrometry. So spectrometry uh, used to uh, quantify uh, the DNA that has been amplified by PCR. Okay, and in this QPCR, you might use a dyes, right? The uh, DNA using fluorescent dye, uh, either uh, cyber green or TACMAN, molecular beacons of scorpion neuroscopion. Okay, I will explain to you later on what is cyber green and what is uh, TACMAN that uh, mainly used in uh, QPCR. And there is a QRT PCR combinations of reverse transcript test and uh, real time PCR that widely used to detect COVID 19 uh, in Malaysia, lah, not in Malaysia worldwide, because QRT PCR is more precise than using uh, a detection kit. Okay, so it's uh, most uh, trustable uh, method. Compared to kit lah, even though kit ni dah dalam tiga uh, lima minit dah boleh tahu, tapi it's not uh, precise. But QRT PCR, even though it take like one day, right, twenty four hours, but you boleh tahu. But it's really precise. Right? Even though it more tedious, but it more precise lah. So, uh, in order to break the change, you have to ensure that the results for the COVID nineteen is is a good result lah, precise result. So that there is no room for a mistake, right? Kalau ada room for mistake, orang yang tak ada negatif, you kata positif. But orang yang positif, you kata negatif. So orang yang positif dengan negatif tu boleh balik rumah and boleh jangkit-jangkit orang lain, right? So this is QRT PCR. Okay, so first let's go to the uh, RT PCR. Okay, so RT PCR is universal transcript test PCR a variance of uh, PCR technique. So as I mentioned before, uh, it's a uh, combination of uh, PCR and reverse trans transcript test uh, as well. Uh. Uses RNA as initial template. So in PCR, we use DNA as a template, but in RT-PCR, we use RNA as initial template. And uh, we use RNA-directed DNA polymerase or RTH. 
okay, gener generated declarations of cDNA transcript transcripts from a RNA template the reverse transcript the process. So RTH ni is actually a, a reverse transcript test. So uh, is a, uh, a specific DNA polymerase that kind that can that has ability to perform a reverse uh, transcription process and it yields a double stranded cDNA lah, uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the throw the chipti belum sangat dah lupa semua term after the end of the process okay so this is the steps of uh, reverse transcript test so the first one is primer annual to the target RNA. So this is RNA sequence prim uh, uh, primer uh, attached. And uh, RTTH, uh, R is reverse lah. TTH ni is derived from uh, thermophilus bacteria if, if not mistaken, TTH ni. So T stands for thermo, TH for thermophilus. Right, it's the so then a then a polymerase ni is extract out from TTH, okay, and it has uh, RT it has RT uh, activity lah, reverse transcriptase like, activity, and it, it can catalyze. So from the RNA sequence, they will catalyze uh, cDNA, and this is the summary of the. Uh, step so you have step one, step two, step three, and end of the cycle lah. So at the end of the cycle, you will yield a double stranded DNA copy amplicon. So this is cDNA lah, double stranded DNA. So this is the amplicon. Right. So protocol of the RT, you have like one step RT PCR and two step RT PCR that you can read. The easy one lah, the difference between one step and two step yeah. And this is the advantage of uh, RT-PCR, okay? It have very highly sensitive uh, technique lah, okay? Even though you are the low copy pun, for example, like mRNA kan, the, in COVID-19 uh, sample, uh, if you want to, uh, to get your sample, can you wait for a while? I know. Buang ni lah. Betul lah. So even though okay, uh, for mainly COVID nineteen ini dapat dia ambil nasal nasal punya swab lah. Okay, dia masuk lagi dong dia tu kat kong kong tu uh, ambil sampel. So even though the uh, RNA uh, that purified from the bacteria in uh, in the virus in, in very uh, small concentration or small amount. It still can be used uh, in RT PCR, so it doesn't matter lah. Ada banyak ke, lagi banyak lagi bagus lah. Tapi walaupun sikit, it still can be detected. And in the case of uh, I just want to show you how sensitive RT PCR ni. Uh, siapa yang paling tukar besi tu? Uh, Wow, Rabbi, siapa nama dia? Ah, siapa nama dia? Allah, lupa. Yang, okay, there is one athlete measure yang uh, yang lepas tukur besi tu apa. Jackie, Jackie, yes, Jackie. So, Jackie um, uh, is been infected by COVID-19 lah. So, dia kena uh, early March and he been uh, infected you know he been uh, uh, admitted in the hospital more than 60 days i think dan dekat 2 bulan so why this happen usually tak lama macam tu lah okay so dia tak ada apa-apa symptom okay actually dah lepas 2 3 minggu tu pun dia, dia dah rasa dia sihat tapi still when they did a sampling and they tried for RT uh, they did RT PCR still positive COVID-19 so even the one month after two months one still uh, ada trace of uh, COVID-19 even though after two months uh, two months plus after uh, the uh, discharge from the hospital 
still ada uh, positif COVID-19 but then uh, KKM discharge je lah okay why because of you know you, WHO already make a guideline so the patients if with positive COVID-19 should be admitted at least 14 days lah so after 14 days if there is still a uh, trace of uh, COVID-19 still positive COVID-19 after RT-PCR you can discharge uh, but then uh, uh, first you have compile that dia tak ada gejala lah tak ada batu tak ada demam tak ada so on and so forth tapi still RT-PCR positive so kenapa dia boleh discharge because uh, as I mentioned before even though there is a small sample of RNA still they are can amplify then they are can consider as a positive so in the case of JK tu tadi sampai 2 bulan duduk ke hospital walaupun dia tak ada mam tak atuk ke semua so the RNA degraded RNA form of the virus is still there ok so the white nasal swap tu still ada RNA uh, even though virus sudah tak ada so virus sudah pecah lah means that not pecah lah <laughs> virus sudah ada di in the degraded form tapi ada RNA punya sample so dia masuk dalam bacteria and then bacteria tu dah pecah eh no masuk dalam cell and cell burst out release all the RNA uh, outside in the environment then what's it about swap tu they are clean your RNA of the virus ok so still positive so now the, the procedure is after 14 days kalau still positive and then tak ada symptom whatsoever they can release the patient discharge the patient ok so that's an example lah how sensitive the RT-PCR Okay, define in to follow protocol, of course. And next is uh, applications, right? So applications mainly in, in genome mapping, alright, gene function, biodiversity, evolution studies. As so evolution studies, you know, about how the genes is evaluates from one species to other species, alright, diagnostics, uh, parental testing, so on and so forth, detection of drug resistant genes, of course, and foreign seed and fingerprinting. Okay, so now let's go to real-time PCR, Q-PCR, okay? So, okay. Before, in uh, uh, conventional methods, before QPR is being invented, kita quantify, uh, amplified DNA actually by using agarose gel. Okay, remember, I tell you, when we run agarose gel, we put marker along the side lah. So marker along the side too. Uh, it give a different different size of the band. Kat marker. And marker too, if you can see under the UV light, it give a level level of intensity. So the level of intensity too, uh, is not suka-suka. So actually you can compare your intensity of your bank, uh, sample bank and intensity of your uh, marker. For example, marker you got 300, 3000 base pair dengan sample you 3000 base pair. Okay, so memang size dia sama tapi you nak, you nak quantify dia berapa banyak uh, uh, concentrations of your sample. So for example kat dalam marker tu, uh, kat 300 base pair, uh, the intensity di uh, intensity of the band secerah ni so setebal ni and the, the concentration for example 2.5 nanogram per microlit kalau intensity sample you sama then we can say that oh your sample actually consists of 2.9 nanogram of DNA per microlit ok so but then you can do that but then the problem is uh, it's not precise ok and it's uh, low sensitivity of course lah Right, uh, mana pula aku punya pergi, aku punya mouse ni, sekejap. Alright. Okay, so low sensitivity, low, low resolution, alright, non-automated, of course, kalau manually, kalau buat manually ni, tend to do uh, a more mistake lah. You nak bantu agar tu kadang-kadang tak cantik, alright? The migrations of the band, the separations of the band is not very good enough. So, results are not expressed as a number, okay, based on personal evaluations lah. Tak ada a concrete data. So, if you present uh, agar rozial 
uh, in uh, apa ni for audience and you say that okay this concentration ni concentration then audience saja you how you compare the concentration oh i, I compare it in agarah gel and based on my experience so tak laku so you need a concrete data concrete num- number to uh, support your uh, result lah and mendi in agarah gel uh, bukan sekarang lah masa dulu we use Uh, ethereum bromide staining is not very quantitative and point analysis so ethereum bromide is very uh, carcinogenic uh, uh, agent lah. so we try to avoid using uh, ethereum bromide okay this is the problem that we use agarose gel to quantify dna uh, uh, amplify dna so uh, this is the summary lah of, co- of co- conventional PCR based testing format so from dna uh, extractions Then then the implications during PCR, then for amplification, amplifications, uh, baru kita boleh run uh, the agarose gel electrophoresis lah. So if you nak kena buat the uh, inhibition, you kena buat inhibition first, then baru you run gel, baru you run uh, run uh, southern block or northern block or western block, you boleh run. So this is conventional method. Okay, so okay. So instead of using conventional method, so you can use a real-time PCR to quantify your uh, amplified DNA. Okay. So kalau you ada banyak lab, you ada banyak duit, you boleh belilah QPCR. Kalau you tak ada banyak duit, you lab you tak ada banyak duit, you just beli spectrophotometry asing. Okay. So PCR asing, spectroscopy, uh, spectrophotometry uh, asing. Okay. Kalau you banyak duit, you beli dua dalam satu PCR and uh, uh, spectrometer dalam satu mesin okay. boleh actually uh, okay, PCR after you run PCR then sample you, you ambil sikit then you measure concentration using spectrometer benda yang sama, boleh saja. tapi leceh lah uh, and then you tak boleh tengok real time tapi kalau you ada QPCR you can see the real time process And you can know the DNA concentrations on the spot. Okay, uh, QPCR is based on the detections of the quanti- quantitations of fluorescent reporter. Okay, uh, the main uh, principle of uh, real-time PCR is based on fluorescent reporter. Lah. So, the amplified DNA will carry the fluorescence uh, reporter that can be read but read by the uh, spectrometer okay and instead of measuring the end, end point we focus on the first significant increase in the amount of PCR product so instead of measuring uh, end product lepas PCR tu bagi nak measure no this is where you can measure from the beginning okay sampai so, you boleh tengok okay The time of the increase uh, correlated inversely to the initial amount of DNA, of course, and type of dye use is cyber green, tagment probes, molecular beacon probes, copian probes, um, multiple probes. Okay. Right. So as I mentioned, you just uh, in the beginning, I will explain to you only cyber green and uh, tagment probes. Lah. Okay, cyber green. Right, cyber green double stranded DNA binding dye right emits a strong fluorescent signal upon binding to double stranded DNA. So cyber green is a chemical that recognizes DNA, but it only recognizes the minor groove of the DNA. So, kalau you boleh recall balik in DNA there is a major groove and minor groove. So cyber green will attach to the minor groove of the double stranded DNA not when it's single stranded so uh cyber green cannot bind lah. okay non specific binding is disadvantage okay sometimes cyber green ni uh non specific right for example kalau primer you amplified a wrong target okay so even though wrong target but it still been amplified and cyber green still bind sebab apa sebab dia double stranded so It very non-specific. Kalau you buat, uh, you confident dengan cara you buat, you confident dengan result you and you tak ada sangat banyak duit and you tak nak tedious kerja, you can boleh buat, you boleh pakai cyber green lah. Uh, uh, non-specific, but then it's non-specific binding. 
the binding dekat target ataupun non target but then it have to be double double stranded and require extensive optimization longer amplicon create the strongest in all of course lah okay so this is an example of cyber grid okay so in a polymerization so masa DNA during denaturation okay the double stranded is uh, split up so when split up cyber grid cannot bind lah Right, then primer masuk, reverse and forward masuk and then a polymerase start to uh, elongate during elongations. Okay? And when it complete, a polymerization complete, double stranded form and uh, cyber green can bind to the mining groove of the DNA. Then it, would, it can be fluorescent. Lah. Okay, so the fluorescence can be detected by the uh, spectrometry in the qPCR. Whereas in uh, Tagman probes is specifically designed, okay. So if you remember uh, the a microarray and uh, uh, the a microarray and uh, when you want to do uh, northern northern blots, okay, you design the probes that's specific to your target sequence, okay. Yang ni yang ni non specifics, but then. You have first, you have to design a probe that specific to the target sequence, okay? But then the probes will consist of fluoropore and quencher, okay? Fluoropore ni macam ni lah, uh, uh, green color, eh? fluoropore, right? Okay, uh, first, uh, you will add uh, tag man ni masuk dalam dunia mixture lah, uh, master mixture before you run uh, PCR. Okay, so the tag man probes ni cannot bind to the DNA in this double stranded form. Okay, so means that after DNA uh, uh, denaturation, the first step, so uh, double stranded can split up into single stranded, and tag uh, probes ni boleh bind to single stranded, uh, single stranded target sequence lah. So you should bear in mind, fluoropore ni emits lights. Okay, so quencher ni will suppress the lights that been emit from fluoropore. With under one conditions, fluoropore and quencher should be near, right? The distance is near, so that quencher ni can suppress uh, fluoropore ni from uh, emits. Uh, the signals okay okay so bila uh, when when both in the uh, distance is near so there is no signal lah. okay so bila dah single stranded uh, ampli amplicon uh, prop ni akan bind to single stranded then primer akan bind then a polymerase akan start elongations okay so when then a polymerase start elongations bila dah sampai dekat sini right DNA polymerase tu akan, you know, degrades these probes, okay? Degrade these probes and free the fluoropore, right? When fluoropore is free, then it can give a, uh, emits the signal, fluorescence, okay? So qPCR can detect, means that, yes, now that your target sequence is being amplified, okay? So you tell you're confident, uh, the signal come from the uh, target sequence that your target sequence that already been amplified. Kalau maknanya tak ada target, uh, the ta kalau tak, tak ada fluorescence, so there is no uh, signal that been emitted, means that your target sequence is not been amplified. Macam tu je senang. Okay, sebab apa? Why it emits signal? Because the distance is already far. Okay, so it results in PCR products and fluorescence. So the the more your target sequence is being amplified, the more fluorescent you can get. So the more signal you can uh, read. Okay. So that's the principle of the Tagman probes. Okay. The advantage of real time PCR is not influenced by non-specific amplifications. Of course, amplification can be monitored in real time. You will think of when it doubling up the DNA. 
no post PCR processing of product high throughput low high through throughputs and low contamination risk. <coughs> And very sensitive. The only re requirement is thousand lab full less RNA than conventional. See, small amount, but no problem. I see. So three picogram is also is, is is enough. More specific, sensitive, and reproducible. So even though advantages the banyak, there is also disadvantages of the real uh, time PCR. Setting up requirement, high technical skill and support, yeah, sangat mahal, run more expensive than conventional PCR, of course, but they combine two machines in one, um, uh, combine of two uh, machines in one body, and uh, then a continuation in marine analysis, only happen in marine analysis. Lah. Okay, so this application of real-time PCR, okay. Right, that's all. Okay, guys. So, uh, it finish uh, on chapter 6. So, if you have any questions or any doubt, you can freely uh, ask me either uh, private WhatsApp or you can ask in the group. So, I can uh, answer it so everyone can see it. So... To the good, right? We go, we we we, uh, we we will conduct this uh, online class until end of the uh, end of this year lah, until December, as uh, kerajaan pernah keluar kepilihan. So you will stay at home until the end of the year. which is very good for you guys. So boleh tidur, boleh lepak, boleh makan. But and for us, lecturer, um, still under co uh, consideration. Uh, maybe we have to go back to office. We can do online class uh, from the office. Uh. Okay. So, yeah, that's all for now. Stay safe. Stay at home. Selamat Hari Raya, guys. Hope to see you in the next session. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.